Good morning, folks. It is good to be with you on this beautiful, sunny, little humid, stifling day. It is wonderful to see your face, Regina. Good morning, Alan. It is good to be together. I invite you to take just a moment to take a couple deep, deep healing breaths. Give yourself a rest from this week, from all that it has held. Enter into a recognition of your Sabbath, of this time set aside to recognize the beauty of humanity, the beauty of creation, and the beauty of God. And welcome to church. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Barbara. It's good to be with you guys. Our first hymn this morning is When Peace Like a River, also known as It Is Well With My Soul. <clears throat> I invite you to sing along if you would like. Um, the lyrics can be found in the email that you should have received yesterday. Um, if you don't see it in your mailbox, check your junk mail or your, I think it's called junk mail, maybe only junk mail. Anyway, check the place where your mail goes when your computer thinks that it's junk <laughs> and, um, and it will hopefully be there. Um, and uh, the rest of the notes for the service can be found in our bulletin on our website, stgeorgeswavl.org. And if you are visiting with us, um, good morning, Becky Everett and Pup Henry. Good morning. Um, if you are visiting this morning, uh, welcome. It is good to be with you um, in this strange time when we are physically disconnected, um, but um, socially quite connected. Um, please leave us your info if you would like us to get in touch with you. We would love to know who you are. Um, if you're watching this live or if you're watching it after the fact, um, send us some way to reach out to you. Um, a lot of us uh, have a lot of needs right now that we are covering up or hiding away, tucking away at home. And, uh, and this is a safe place to share those and to reach out to one another um, and to be community that, that we need right now. So I encourage you to um, equip us to do that for you if, uh, if that's something that you're okay with and we would love to get to know you. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good day, Barbara. Good to see you.
you know it. <laughs> because if you don't know it, all you have to do is repeat after me in the exact same note. And, um, and only your dogs and your family, um, and maybe if you're really loud, your neighbors will hear you. So please, sing along. Good morning, Lyle. I didn't say good morning to you yet. And yes, as you'll see in the comments, we are <clears throat> back in the kitchen this Sunday. Um, there's something so so appropriate about it. Um, and it's definitely a place where I feel very comfortable. Um, and what an amazing thing to have this be the place where in normal times we share meals um, with friends and family and community. <sighs> Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. Again, I invite you to sing with me the Gloria. We sing it three times through, and it goes, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. It's funny that we can do this, but um, Alan, who is putting Ursa down for a nap, I can sort of hear myself with like a minute delay from the bedroom over the fan, rem remarkably. So if you could turn it down just a little bit. Thank you, love. May God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments. And by loving you and our neighbor, grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis this morning, chapter 24, verses 34 through 38, 42 through 49, and 58 through 67. The servant said to Laban, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, I, na I now, now, if, excuse me, if now, you will only make successful the way I am going. 
I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes to draw, comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw water for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca, coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the stream, to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kin, kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right or to the left. And they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent, her, so they sent away her sister Rebecca and her nurse, their sister, excuse me, their sister Rebecca and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebecca and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebecca and went on his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer, from Beer Laharoi and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done, then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. I invite you in uh, to join me in reading our psalm appointed for today, uh, which in this case is not from the Psalms, it is from the Song of Solomon. Uh, chapter 2, verses 8 through 13. So we'll read this together. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For the winter now is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Our second reading this morning is from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 7, verses 15 through 25a. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. 
I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my innermost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members, wretched man that I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. invite you to sing with me our gospel refrain. Help us attend to your words, O God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowd, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither drinking nor eating, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. <clears throat> yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's sing together. Help us respond to your words, O God. Gracious and loving God, send your Holy Spirit upon us, teach us, change us, help us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning, <clears throat> though you may not have noticed it, is broken into two separate pieces. And the second piece 
contains some of Jesus's most encouraging and comforting words. Come unto me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We read these words, we hear these words in knowledge of what Jesus' burdens are in knowledge of what Jesus' life looks like. We know that he will move from town to town, often fleeing people who will try to turn him in to authorities to have him killed, and finally he will make his way to Jerusalem, be betrayed, and be put to death on the cross on a hill called the Place of the Skull. We know that part of his burden is the burden of the hard wood of the cross. So the comfort of these words, I think, ought to stir up some questions in us, ought to feel already like a little challenge. How can this burden be light? How can this burden be light? These questions point to a central paradox of Christianity, that the way of the cross, the way of death and suffering, is somehow also the way of life. Several weeks ago now, um, a few of us at St. George's started reading together James Cone's book, The Cross and the Lynching Tree. And Cone in that book argues that the cross, this great symbol of salvation, has been, quote, detached from any reference to the ongoing suffering and oppression of human beings. He says it has been, I'll just repeat that, detached from any reference to the ongoing suffering and oppression of human beings. He says that the cross has become so harmless that we think of it as a non-offensive ornament that no longer reminds us of the cost of discipleship. Now in this book, Cohn is sp focusing specifically on a period of U.S. history called the lynching period, the lynching era, from 1880 roughly to 1940. Now, this is a period of time when it is estimated that over 5,000 African Americans were lynched. 5,000. And yet, at that time, as Cohn points out, many, many white theologians and preachers and leaders of the church did not connect the public torture and execution of black folks with the public torture and execution of Christ. Why? In part, it is by keeping the cross and the lynching tree separated and keeping the cross in that place where it is so sanitized that we can bear to put it up in our churches where it can stay embedded in the institutional church and not have any relevance, any life-changing impact on the Christians who were crucifying black people at that time with impunity. Those folks who claimed to be Christians, who were doing these atrocities, were able to go and sit at the feet of the cross in their churches and remain comfortable. The words of comfort that we hear from Jesus this morning ought not to be separated from the power of the cross, ought not to be separated from the scandal of the cross, from this 
most powerful act of solidarity and love and sacrifice, this salvific saving act. And as I mentioned in the passage that we read this morning in Matthew's Gospel, the lectionary has pieced it together and has left out some very discomforting words. The passage between where the reading ends and then picks up again, verses 20 through 24 contain an invective against the towns that have witnessed Jesus' miracles and yet have failed to listen to his call to repent and return to right relationship with God, who have failed to care for and honor and heal the needy and the sick and the poor among them. Instead of recognizing Jesus for who he is, and instead of recognizing John the Baptist for who he is, and this does show up in the passage that we read. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Instead of recognizing Jesus for who he is. Excuse me, I think I need a cup of water. <clears throat> Ursa has been sick and maybe I'm picking up a little of his uh, throatiness. Be right back. <clears throat> Jesus' critique of these towns is that they have been toying with him. They have almost been playing with him. They've been expecting him to line up with their expectations. And instead of recognizing Jesus and being challenged by him, being changed, repenting, turning in a new direction, Instead of doing that, they dismiss him because he is not playing along. They look down on him for associating with sinners, for sharing a table with sinners. So it's after his critique of these towns' unwillingness to recognize their failures, to recognize their wrongs, to recognize the ways that they are failing to serve God and be in right relationship with God. It's only after his scathing critique of those towns that these words come about, that Jesus refocuses and urges the crowd to follow him by saying, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. What I'm about to say is hard for me to say, and I think um, that there are, I think it's, it's hard for me to say, and it's probably part of the reason that I'm needing to sip on water, the words are sort of sticking in my throat <clears throat> because I need to say that something that I think a lot of religious leaders uh, don't agree with me about um, and it's uh, critical and I don't always enjoy being uh, critical but I think that right now <clears throat> especially the leaders of the institutional church are choosing to keep the cross separate from the suffering, crucified, and lynched people of this country right now. I believe that many in the institutional church are afraid to defund and dismantle the structures that are terrorizing God's people. And I think we are afraid to dismantle them because I think that we have false faith in them. I think we have a false faith in them. I think we think that they are in fact holding us up and keeping us safe. Remember that Jesus was killed 
at the hands of those who were trying to keep the peace. People who were charged with protecting the Pax Romana, or the Peace of Rome, P-E-A-C-E. -E. They were charged with protecting that peace, and the way of doing it was to execute those who were perceived as a threat to that empire and by making a public and threatening display of their bodies. In the lynching era, as Cohn points out, men and women and even some children were lynched by folks who also claimed that they were protecting their peace by removing dangerous black people from their midst and by making them a public and threatening display. And now within the legal system and outside of the legal system, police are killing black and brown LGBTQ and many folks who are struggling with mental illness and drug addiction and substance abuse with impunity. To give you some perspective, 2,317 people have been killed in mass shootings since 2015. 358 police officers have been shot and killed while in the line of duty since 2015. And since 2015, police have shot and killed 5,437 people in the U.S. And the leaders of the church are talking about police reform. Talking about police reform just as they have been talking about police reform as we have been talking about police reform for years. But the leaders of the church are also defending the police system as generally good, as generally not racist. Quote, most cops are good cops, but there are a few who are a problem. End quote. This is being said while those trained to carry guns, those trained by the system and armed by the system with the blessing of our money continue to kill unarmed people, continue to terrorize oppressed and marginalized communities. We are failing. We are failing to recognize the brutal reality of the cross as it stands here and now. We are failing to recognize that the black man lying in the street, killed by the supposed protectors of law and order of safety and keepers of the peace, that that black body is our modern version of Christ crucified. Why? Because we did not stop sanitizing the cross after the lynching era after 1940, we sanitize the cross still. We gild its ugliness and we remove the figure of the bleeding, dying child of God stretched across it. We need to open up all our senses and open up our hearts. Now is not the time to talk about how the Roman soldiers who pounded in the nails were good people because many, I'm sure, were. How to say that there is a small minority in the system that is killing our people of bad apples and bad actors. Now is the time to shine a light on the systems that put people armed with powerful, deadly weapons and trained to use them into the most vulnerable and yes, volatile situations. Now is the time to say, now is the time to say we will not pay 
for you to terrorize our communities, our already vulnerable communities, that we will not pay to buy military-grade weapons for use against our people. It is time to say that Christ is the one we follow and defend. No institution, no structure, no empire. It is Christ is who we follow, and Christ is lying and dying in the streets. How can God's burden possibly be light? How can we possibly find rest for our souls? We can and we do. Because God has taken up this mantle of the most broken humanity, of the most downtrodden humanity, of our humanity, and of the humanity of those we hurt and maim and kill. Because we proclaim a God who enters into death, even shameful, torturous death of the cross, of the lynching tree, of the shot, and the choked, and the sick, and neglected, and maligned. And that God shows us that there is, somehow, miraculously, life beyond. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith in the words of our liturgical affirmation found in your bulletin. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Amen. I invite you to pray with me. Let us pray for the whole world, asking that the God of love and mercy hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, Aaron, our priest, and for all clergy and people, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For all global, national, state, and local leaders, and for all in positions of power, that they be held accountable to the people impacted by their decisions God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For this city of Asheville, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For God's good earth, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, God of love and mercy, 
hear our prayer. For all young people, protect and guide them, that they may grow in love and hope, and may find your peace and grace throughout their lives. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. I invite you to take a moment to reflect on all the ways that you are complicit, that we as a church, uh, as a parish, as a nationwide church are complicit in the harming and dehumanizing of other humans, that we have failed to honor our baptismal covenant. And recognizing that we begin with the words together. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. I invite you to pass the peace out your windows to your neighbors, to your dogs or cats or animals of any sort. I invite you to pass the peace to the folks who share the house with you. Pass the peace to yourself. Pass the peace to this place that you live, to the world that so desperately needs it. And pass the peace to us also, please. Uh, you'll see a little, um, uh, a little, what do you call it? Speech bubble? Speech bubble? Uh, at the bottom of your screen, at the bottom of this video, and you can just type a message in there, click on that, and send us a comment, pass the piece to us. And I'm going to go pass the piece to my little sleeping family, uh, and then I will be back and will read your pieces uh, to all of us. Peace. Beth Lassiter says, peace, peace, Beth. Noel Allen Schwartz, Pe it, well, it's a, it's a kissy face. It's a smiley kiss face. Uh, Yvonne Cook Riley and maybe Danielle too says, peace be with you, my friends. Peace to you both and good health and love. Denny says, peace to everyone. Peace, Denny. Uh, Barbara Lassiter says, God's peace to the world. Heal our hearts. Ah, amen. Oh, Yvonne says, peace. Oh, Danielle says, peace and love to all from Adele Packer. Peace, Adele. So good to have you with us. Molly says, peace from Molly. Peace to all from Marsha and Molly. Regina says, peace to all. Joseph Hamlin says, peace to all. Stay safe. Peace, Joe. 
Everett says, peace from Becky, Everett, and Henry the pup. Barbara Peterson says, peace, 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 peace from Lyle, Joseph, and Barbara. Jillian says, peace be with you. And Willie says, peace be with you. It is so good to see, uh, to see your comments and your little tiny, tiny, tiny faces um, on the screen. <laughs> it is good to be with you. And I long for the day when we are all back together physically. Uh, Bruce Johnson says, peace and love from Anne and Bruce. Peace be with you, mom and dad. Um, I don't think I really have any announcements um, other than that our conversations about the book that I mentioned in my in my sermon are ongoing. Uh, Joy says, peace and comfort of Christ be with all of you. Amen. Peace be with you, Joy. Um, that, uh, that discussion of that book is open to everyone. You don't have to have the book. You don't have to be reading the book. I give a summary of the chapter before we get started. Um, and also we talk about things like... Um, Regina brought up a, a great point the other week of when someone says something that I really disagree with that I think is, is actually racist um, on Facebook, how do I respond? Um, and so we're actually going to be sharing some of those comments with each other um, and talking about how we might respond or not respond, but how, how we can respond in our own lives. Um, and so it's a wonderful discussion of, of racism, of the ways that we've been uh, brought up, um, good, bad, and otherwise, um, of the things that we are seeing in our communities, uh, especially now that we are, some of us, uh, a little bit more aware than we have been in the past. Um, and um, it's just a wonderful little community. So I invite you to join us. That is at 12 noon on Wednesdays. Um, and we're going to continue after the book is over. Um, and because um, it's just it's important work to do right now so I encourage all of you to to join if you can oh I also wanted to thank um, Lyle for doing a bunch of yard work the other day really appreciate that um, and doing some of the less fun yard work um, such as scraping the little tiny things that are growing up out of the cracks in between the paving stones in the memorial garden um, he very wonderfully left his tool there uh, and so if anyone wants to stop by and then go down into that uh, courtyard which is if you haven't been been down in there it is just this wonderful beautiful beautiful sort of secret garden kind of space um, where it, the ashes of, of many of our loved ones rest um, and memorials uh, to honor their memories are there and uh, you can pick up that little tool and scrape some plants away. <laughs> so please do that if you would like. Um, and just on a broader note, please use the space of the churchyard, church grounds, whenever you would like um, and encourage folks in the neighborhood to know that, uh, that there's, there is no fence around our church for a good reason. I also invite you to uh, join our coffee hour after the service. It's usually 11.30ish, but my sermon, uh, as you probably noticed, along with the readings, uh, went a little long. So it'll be a little bit later than 11.30, but hope to see you after the service. It's the same link as every week. Um, and also again, welcome to any newcomers. And if you would please uh, leave us, unless you really want to be anonymous, which is fine, but if you would please leave us uh, some way of getting in touch with you, some sort of message, um, so that we can connect with you in this uh, potentially disconnected time that we are trying to piece back together. Our hymn for, uh, for our offertory is Commit Thou All That Grieves Thee. This is in our hymnal, and we will sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Um, and that reminds me that it is our offertory hymn, the hymn that in, in a normal life, uh, pre-coronavirus normal life, we would be passing the plate during this time. Um, there are lots of things that need your financial attention and love. Uh, we are one of those uh, entities or institutions, and you can hit the donate button on our website. Um, and it's an easy it's an easy way to give you can send us a check uh, goodness you can slip cash under the church door uh, whatever you want uh, there are treasurers probably gonna scold me for saying that 
please give in whatever way you're able. Um, give to the church. Um, give to the organizations that are doing God's work. Um, and be generous with yourselves and with your family as you are able. And thank you. start over. This is a new song for me.
Eucharistic hymn is, uh, our Eucharistic prayer is sung like a hymn, and uh, you will find it in your bulletin. Turn this. And I'm going to go ahead and sing the responses uh, since the rest of the family is asleep, taking the morning nap. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your Spirit you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful from every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Please sing along. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet, you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, 
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. As oft as you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your children, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Friends, kindred, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I invite you to take a moment to share in the presence of Christ, whether that's through consuming unconsecrated bread and wine or juice, or consecrated bread or wine or juice, or whether that's simply inwardly acknowledging and recognizing Christ's life living on in you.
took a while because I was trying not to wake the baby up, but I failed. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy Eternal Majesty, Holy Incarnate Word, Holy Abiding Spirit, bless you forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is one that you may recognize. I invite you to sing along in your home if you would like. Friends, go in peace to love and serve our God. I hope you have a wonderful week, uh, a blessed week. Please reach out to us if you need anything. Um, our, our prayers are already with you. Um, let's try to stay connected to one another in these hard times. And may you be blessed this week and be a blessing to others. And I hope I see you at coffee hour, which will start uh, in just a minute when I start it. So please uh, head on over to the fellowship hall. Much love, many blessings.